All right. Hello, 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 guys. It is Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and that means it is time for our weekly live show. Uh, looks like we are all working and all uh, cylinders are firing today, so that is a good sign. Um, <clears throat> so welcome, guys. Uh, if you haven't been here before, my name is Bart Johnson. I am a cinematographer and YouTuber based in the Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. area, and welcome to my channel. Um, if you have been here before, welcome back, and I appreciate you joining us, hopefully, once again for today's live show. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about yet another uh, helpful filmmaking topic, or hopefully it's helpful for you. And uh, we're also going to be able to do some live chat and discussion. So if you guys are here and you're in the conversation live, uh, feel free to leave a comment or a question for me. Um, and I can pop them up on the screen. I know you can't actually see them right now because there's nothing in there. Well, anyway, now my buttons don't seem to be working, but I can do it, so I'll switch to that right there. And uh, yeah, the live chat will come up on the screen right here, and so any of your questions and comments uh, will be immortalized forever in the playback of this video right here on screen. Um, <clears throat> but today we're gonna be talking about a very important topic, first and foremost, and that is um, backing up and protecting your, your footage and even just any data that you have on your computer. Um, so especially when you're shooting video um, these days with 4K and, and higher bitrate codecs and stuff like that, uh, video footage can become very quickly very large in size, so you're going to need some large capacity storage. Um, but you also want to be able to protect that um, because when it comes down to it, you know, whether you're a YouTuber, whether you're doing stuff just for fun, or whether you're, especially if you're a professional and, and getting paid to go and shoot stuff, your footage at the end of the day is single-handedly the most important thing that you have. Uh, what is on that media card is what matters. Um, <clears throat> everything else can be replaced, uh, you know, cameras can be replaced. I mean, I guess personnel can't be replaced. So safety is number one, but your footage is number two. Um, it's high up there. Uh, Cause you know, if you're being paid, that's what the client's paying for is what's on that little piece of plastic, you know, that, that media card that you have. Um, so that's all that matters and you really should treat it as such. Uh, not only on set, but then afterwards when you get back to wherever you're editing, wherever you're working, um, and you want to make sure that's safe and secure and also that you have enough space. So I'm going to go over a few things with you guys here today. First and foremost, we're going to go over some of the storage options that are out there. Uh, you've probably heard of most of these and so I won't go super in depth. Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the particular storage solutions that I use. Um, and then I'm also going to take you through my sort of sample workflow from taking my footage from out of the camera to all the steps that it goes through to coming home here uh, to my, my home server and edit bay here um, and everything that I use along the way to keep my footage safe. Um, so like I said guys, if you have any questions or comments along the way, please feel free to join in that live chat. Um, I will be able to see them and pop them up on the screen and we can have a conversation as we go along. Um, and so the I guess we'll just dive right in then. So storage is number one, um, and storage, you know, when it boils down to it, it comes to space. Um, a lot of people are shooting 4K now, um, and even on small affordable cameras, they now have codecs that are, are huge. Um, like the GH5 that I'm using right now has that insane 400 uh, megabits per second codec that can really, really quickly fill up. It can even start to rival ProRes uh, size files. And so you want to have some storage um, to be able to hold all of this. Um, and as opposed to getting a whole bunch of just little external drives, as you can see, I do have a bunch here and I'll get into how I use these later. Um, as opposed to doing that, you're probably going to want to look into something that's called a RAID system. So I'm sure many of you have heard of RAIDs before, are familiar with RAIDs. Uh, but if you're not, sort of the, the long and short of it is it's basically an enclosure into which you insert a bunch of drives. They live there together 
and there's a lot of different ways that you can format that setup um, either to get more speed if you're working off of it or to get what they call redundancy uh, which protects some of your data in the event that one or multiple of those drives fail. Um, <clears throat> now there's lots of different RAID configurations and setups and, and let me show you guys an awesome uh, little resource here. So let's see here if this will go through. So here you go. This is, a, this is a resource that's available online if you're interested in understanding a little bit more about RAID and particularly if you want to be able to create your own and figure out which version is best for you. Um, so here you go. It's called the RAID calculator and uh, I have a link uh, to this down in the description down below. It's a, it's a fantastic little resource, nothing fancy, very simple. Um, but you know, you put in the number of disks that you want to put in there. So say I was doing four disks in a RAID, um, a single disk size, say I'm getting ones, let's just do one terabyte drives. We'll keep it simple. So 1000 gigabytes, one terabyte. And then they have the different RAID types. Uh, so RAID one, RAID, RAID zero, RAID five, RAID 6, so they have all these different options for you. So let's go with RAID 1, and we'll just go to calculate and see what it says here. So here it goes. So what it does is it shows you here, okay, so what your final capacity is going to be, it's a thousand gigabytes, so it's going to be a terabyte, but you get four times the read speed, no write speed gain, and three drive failure. So you're kind of wasting three of those drives. I mean, what are the chances of you having three of them fail? But then, you know, you can try a different one. So let's do, uh, let's see a, a RAID 5 setup. There you go. So with that, with your four terabytes in there, you're going to get three terabytes of space available, three times the read speed, no write speed gain, but you have one drive failure. And what that means, that drive failure, is it means that it, there's redundancy. So if any of those drives fail, it's okay because the RAID has your information and your data spread across all of them. So what happens if one fails is you can replace just that failed drive and the remaining three are able to repopulate the data onto that failed drive, meaning you've lost nothing. Uh, you know, you lose a terabyte of space um, because you have to have, you know, you only have three terabytes of working space in that configuration that I was talking about. Um, but you have that protection, um, which is fantastic. You really, really want to have redundancy in some way, shape, or form. Um, and, uh, and so RAID arrays are a great way to do that and a great way to get massive amounts of storage space um, <clears throat> with large sized hard drives. Um, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in just a moment actually about some of the large size hard drives that I in particular like to use. Um, so actually, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll get into sort of my setup that I have here. So I don't use a traditional RAID system like something that was, um, I just showed you off of like the RAID calculator. Uh, I use something that's a little bit more proprietary, a little bit different. Um, and what I actually use is, I use this guy. I use a Drobo, okay? Um, so I know there's a lot of mixed feelings out there about Drobo, uh, but uh, let me talk to you a little bit about why I use them and, uh, and how I use them, because I haven't had, well, I've had a few issues with them, but I've overcome it. I can talk to you guys about that later. Um, but yeah, so I use this thing called a Drobo 5D. Um, it allows you to input five drives and they have their own sort of proprietary system called Beyond RAID um, that actually does a really good job of, of partitioning things and, and offering redundancy and stuff like that. Um, and so I'll have a link to this particular model that I have. You know, they have various different models. You can decide which one is best for you if you're interested in that. Um, but another nice thing is if we go up here, um, I have a link to this as well, but they do have a capacity calculator. So if you wanted to see, okay, so I want to get one of these five bay ones and I want to say, okay, I put a, a few four terabytes in there. And one of the nice things about Drobo is that you can mix and match drive sizes and drive brands. So let's throw some, uh, say I got a two terabyte line around and a one terabyte. So here you go. It does the calculation for you. It shows you how much raw capacity you have. 
um, how much is used for protection and how much uh, actual available space you have. So they do have a calculator available. So if Drobo is something you're looking into, um, then that is available for you there. Um, but what I do want to show you guys, and we've got a, a special little setup today. I have uh, a second camera set up. Um, well, pseudo setup. I'm going to click it on in just a second, um, and we can actually take a look at my physical setup. So let me sh let me get that going here for you guys. I didn't have it turned on while I waited because it's my uh, my old 5D Mark III, and uh, it has a tendency to go to sleep. So I didn't want it to go to sleep on me. So I, instead, I just left it off until we needed it. But so let's go ahead. Let's see if we can take a look at my actual setup. So right over here, um, I have another little bookcase sort of thing uh, where I have all of my storage and extra peripherals and stuff like that, including all of my little home server. So let's take a look at that right now. There we go. So as you can see in here, guys, I've got not one, but two of these Drobos. Um, and I'll talk to you in a little bit about why I have that set up. Um, and I also have a whole array of other drives here uh, connected to my system because I really like to keep as much stuff off of my system itself as possible and keep it on all these drives. Um, so, and I'll go into these and how they work a little bit more later too and how I handle these. Um, but so this is a Drobo unit. This is again, the Drobo 5D. And if we go ahead, it has just this nice magnetic little face that comes off. And you can see in there, I have five different hard drives. Um, and these are actually of varying brands. Um, and so I do have, uh, I have one, two, three, four terabyte drives here. And I've just started expanding this by swapping them out with 10 terabyte drives. So these are two 10 terabyte drives that are in there. And the nice thing is all I have to do is just pull a four terabyte out, add a 10 terabyte in. You do have to wait a good while, usually like overnight because of the amount of data that I have on here, but the remaining drives will populate that drive and then you can add another one. Um, so that's nice. And then what I've been doing as I pull these out, you know, they're still perfectly good, healthy drives. So what I end up doing is I've been slowly transferring them over to this one. So this one has a mix of a few four terabytes. I think it's got a few two terabytes and a few one terabyte. Um, but eventually I'm going to have these both identical, super maxed out with hopefully all 10 terabytes drive or 10 terabyte drives. But I have the flexibility to buy those 10 terabyte drives slowly over time and put them in here as opposed to dropping a ton of money at once because those drives are not cheap. Um, and speaking of that, um, I'm actually going to show you guys which, which specific drives I am using in there. Um, so first I'll start off with the four terabytes. So let me show you guys what I, what I use here. So for the four terabytes, I have forever been using these Western Digital four terabyte black drives. Um, I like the black because they are faster. They're really built for speed, which means that I am able to edit off of that Drobo system with these in there. They're, they're really high speed, really high quality drives. And Western Digital has an amazing uh, warranty on them. Um, if you just go and register them, I think you instantly get like an extra like three years of warranty, which is just awesome. So basically if a drive dies and I have to pull it out of there, which did happen once, I just sent it in and they sent me another one. It's basically like free drives for life as long as they die within the, the warranty period of a few years. So, um, but anyway, this is them. The four tier bytes are pretty affordable. You know, hard drive space, especially spinning hard drives, their prices have come down quite a bit. Um, and so you're looking at about 185 per drive and it looks like they even have six terabytes available now. Um, so those were not available um, when I was doing this. Um, so they do have six terabytes now for 229. Um, but I really wanted to step up my storage as I was shooting more with my Ursa Mini and with the GH5 and everything in 4K. So like I said, I've started moving to some 10 terabyte drives. Um, and the ones that I've got in there and they've been working really well are these, the Seagate 10 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro 
7200 RPM drives. They're pretty quick and they're huge. I mean, 10 terabytes. Uh, now they're not cheap at 450 bucks, which is why I like that flexibility with the Drobo to slowly integrate these in as I have uh, the money available to pick these up. Um, but these are some of the biggest, most reliable drives right now. I know there's like 14 terabyte drives that were just announced, but those are not really available just yet. Um, and so these guys are the way that I'm going and I'm planning on picking up even more of them. And I do have links to them down in the description below if you guys are interested in picking those up. Okay, so I know even right off the bat that was a lot of money and a lot of information for you guys. So you've got You've got RAIDs, you know, you've got traditional RAID systems. Um, you've got companies like Drobo that uh, have their own solutions for you that you can try out. Um, then you've got to populate them with drives and there's tons of drive choices out there. Um, so it really is sort of the wild west out there, uh, but there are things available and at least with spinning drives, prices are coming down on decent sized ones and the the size of them the maximum size does seem to be increasing pretty quickly too like i said they just came out with or not came out with but announced that they're coming out with a 14 terabyte drive soon which is just that's mind-blowing um so do some research uh look at you know how much footage do you usually bring back after a shoot you know are you bringing back like 10 gigs or are you bringing back like 500 gigs um, that's going to sort of dictate what size drives and what size RAID array you want um, for your system. So for me, the, uh, that Drobo 5D, um, and actually both of them, since I have two, and like I said, I'll explain that, um, they've been working fantastic for me. It's a solution. It's a system that I like. They're directly connected to my computer because I'm the only one who's working with it and editing it. I'm not sharing it over a network with a ton of editors. It's just me here at home. Um, and so those are what I'm using for my mass storage. And, uh, you know, I've been slowly upgrading to those larger drives. And hopefully I will be good for uh, a few years to come of shooting a lot of high resolution 4K footage. Um, so guys, like I said, if you are in here and watching live, please feel free to uh, to leave a comment um, and we'll uh, we'll pop it up on the screen and we can have a little discussion and and chat and maybe there are some products and solutions that you have uh, have used in the past that you like better. Um, like I said, Drobo is kind of controversial because some people like to have more control, some people just like a plug and play, um, which Drobo kind of is more on the plug and play, but there you go. Um, that's what I use. So I'm just going to have a quick sip of tea here before we move along. That's good stuff. I'm not sponsored in any way by Honest Tea, but this pomegranate blueberry stuff is freaking amazing. It's not super sweet because I don't really like sweet stuff, but man, it's delicious. I like it a lot. Okay, so We've talked about general just massive storage um, and having basically a big bucket into which you can store all of your footage and also have that redundancy, that little bit of protection there um, against drive failure. You know, Drobos will protect against it. Um, most RAID settings will protect against it as well. Um, so now you have a place to put it and a place where it's relatively safe against a drive failing but that doesn't mean that it's completely safe right away. Um, because how often are you filming something directly next to your computer, uh, your home system with your giant storage array? Um, you know, you're not just pulling the camera card out and immediately popping it into the computer. There's a few steps in between. There may be travel. Um, you know, there may be a good amount of time in between when you shoot and when you get back to put it into that super safe location, which is a common thing for me. Um, you know, I travel and shoot and sometimes I'm gone for a week or two shooting multiple things at the same time and I don't get back here um, until much later. I go on flights and all that stuff. You need to keep everything protected from the moment it pops out of that camera to the moment it makes it 
into your system, into your storage array um, in your edit bay. So I'm going to share with you guys uh, a little bit of how I do that. So a sample workflow for me. Um, when I'm on set, I don't bring a large storage array like the ones that I've shown you here. Some people do that, I do not. Um, but what I do bring is some of these portable hard drives. So I have quite a few Western Digital portable drives here. Um, and I bring these with me on set. And so what I do, just as a rule of thumb, is I always keep, uh, I always have multiple. Um, for every project. So say I'm just going, I'm flying somewhere, I'm traveling, and I'm shooting one project and I'm coming back. What I will do is I will bring three drives with me. So I have a one terabyte drive that I call Field Drive A, where I dump my footage to. However, I also dump my footage on site there, another copy, to a drive with just the client's name on it. And basically what happens there is that means on set, I already have two copies of my footage. I have two copies of everything already. Um, and that's a general rule is that you don't want to leave all of your footage in just one place. You want to have it in at least two, ideally three locations. Okay? So then I end up, I have two, two identical drives, both with the same content at the end of the shoot. So what I'm gonna do at that point is I'm gonna head back to say my hotel room. Now in my hotel room is where I have a third drive that is identical, another little Western Digital, and I call this one Field Drive B. And what I do when I get back is I copy the footage over to Field Drive B. So now I have three copies. So I have Field Drive A, I have Field Drive B, and I have the client's drive. So now I have three copies and what I can do is I can leave one in my hotel room um, and you know if I go out and shoot some more or shoot something else and take the other two with me. So I know that if anything happens to those two drives while I'm out, I have one back in my hotel room that is safe. I have all the previous day's stuff or whatever um, and I'm good. So that's how I sort of handle that when I'm on the road. Then what I do is obviously at some point and I come and I fly back home and it's time to sit down and, and get to work. Well, what I do is I then take these drives, I plug them all into my computer, all of them. And, and this is where things get kind of interesting. So what I'll do is I then copy the footage from one of these over to one of my Drobos, just one of them at first, okay? And then once that copy is done, I then copy the footage again separately over to my other Drobo. Now you might be asking, why do you why do you do that? Why don't you just copy it to one and then just, you know, or just send it to both? So the reason for this is that the Drobo protects against uh, drive failure and redundancy. But what if there's a write issue with the Drobo? And I had this happen before, which means that as soon as I wrote the footage from a drive or from a card and wrote it over to the Drobo, that footage was corrupted as soon as it got onto the Drobo because the Drobo was having write issues, which then means, I mean, if, if something happens to this drive or it gets reused for something else, then I have a big problem um, because my original footage is corrupted. And it doesn't matter um, you know, if I try and copy it off of that Drobo, it's always gonna copy as corrupted. So what I do is I always copy it to multiple sources. Now I do this manually um, in terms of taking it off of a drive or off of a card and putting it onto multiple sources, but there is some software out there that you guys can use. Now I've never actually used this software myself, but I'm really looking into it. Um, and it's something here, let me pull it up. It's called Red Giant Offload. Now, you guys may be familiar with Red Giant. They make some really amazing plugins and software um, that does, I mean, just absolutely everything. They have color grading stuff. They have effects stuff, whatever. Um, but they have this, uh, this program called Offload. Um, and you can buy it. It looks like it's about 100 bucks. 
But what it does, let's see if I can find a good picture of it. Oh, I guess not. But you can kind of see here. What it does is it it copies from your source. You tell it two separate locations, two separate drives that you want it to go to, and it'll go ahead and pull everything off dump it to the first location, then it rereads it and checks it against the original source material, what's called like a checksum, and makes sure that it indeed did copy correctly and there's no corruptions. And then it'll also go ahead and it automatically copy again from your original source to your second destination location or second drive. Um, so this is an automated process. The fact that it does that checksum to make sure that everything is good after it's copied is fantastic. Um, so I'm probably gonna be picking this up. Uh, this would be great also for me to use on, um, like I said, when I'm on set and I copy from my card to two separate drives, something like this where I can plug it in and automate it and it double checks for me would be fantastic, meaning I don't have to do that manual copy anymore. So I could use this once, at the initial capture onto my drives on set. And when I get back home, I can use it to do the redundant copies over to my two Drobos to keep everything safe. Now I have tons of footage all over the place, but at least I'm safe and secure. Um, and a program like this could be really, really helpful uh, to handle that. All right, let's see where we are here. All right, sorry guys, I know there's like a ton of stuff here and it seems like super paranoid and super crazy. Um, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, I have had data failures happen before. I had them happen on projects that I was getting paid a lot of money to do and I ended up having to spend a lot of money for data recovery to get it back uh, because there was no way I could go to my client and be like, look, it's just corrupted, my bad. Um, doesn't work that way. Uh, so paranoia is a good thing in the world of uh, data storage and backup. Um, and so hopefully these things uh, will help you to sleep at night because I know they help me sleep at night. Um, but uh, there is um, a final level of backup that I do and protection um, because as, as you can see, if I'm sitting here at my desk and I have this client drive. This is an actual client drive. It's a project that I'm working on. There's copies of it on here. And there's copies of it on each of my Drobos. So on each one, I have copies of this project. But here's the problem. What if a fire breaks out in this room? Um, what if somebody breaks into my house and comes in here and just cleans everything out? Um, that is the danger of having, while you even do have multiple copies, having them all in the same place. So while I don't have like a storage locker somewhere or, or a, you know, a, a lock box or something at a friend's house where I periodically go and dump a drive, um, I do have some cloud storage that I recommend for you guys. Um, and the service that I use is this one. It's called Backblaze. Uh, not sponsored by Backblaze or anything like that. Um, but I have been using them for probably about two years and I really, really do like them. Um, there's a ton of cloud services out there for backup, so I recommend you go ahead and see what works for you. But let me tell you a few reasons why I have used Backblaze. Um, so Backblaze is extremely simple to use. Um, it's, you know, it runs in the background. It's nothing you really have to think about. Um, but, you know, let's see here, my personal, do I have personal? I don't even remember. I'm not going to log into my account, but uh, I think what I pay, I think I pay $99 a year um, for Backblaze and it's unlimited storage for me. So unlimited for $99 a year. Now you might be thinking like, how is that possible? How do they pull that off? Well. The way that it works is they are charging the same rate to everyone, whether you're storing a terabyte of family photos up there or whether you're like me and you're storing like 40 terabytes of uh, footage and data and computer backups and all that stuff, it's the same cost. So the truth of the matter is that the majority of their users, unlimited, 
really isn't that much data because they don't have that much data to back up. You know, the average consumer doesn't have a ton of video data and high K or high res 4K raw footage um, that they're backing up. And so they're able to afford the space and offer us the same price for unlimited because the majority of the people who are paying for the service really aren't even scratching the surface of, of taking up a ton of space. And obviously I'm probably not either. Their data servers are huge. Um, but what it is is uh, Backblaze just, you know, you get your account set up, uh, you get your software downloaded, you tell it what you want to back up. Let's see if I can show that to you guys here. So if we go here, here's my Backblaze. Backblaze preferences. It'll take a sec to come up, but this is something that gets it in. So then here's the Backblaze utility, um, you know, and it says, you know, I tell it when I want it to back up. I want it to do it at 1 a.m. while I'm sleeping each day. Um, and you tell it what to back up so you can select not only your computer, but any attached hard drives um, and, and it'll all back up. And so what I do with this is I actually have both of my Drobos, my entire computer system, and all of my other libraries backing up to this. And I mean, it is terabytes and terabytes. Um, now you may say like, well, how is that practical? Because that's a ton of data. Well, I'll be honest, the very first initial upload to Backblaze to get all of my data up there, it did take about a month. So my computer was uploading and uploading and uploading um, and it did take about a month, but that's just because I had tens of terabytes of data that I was sending up to them. And the good thing is that after that initial upload, each day it only ups uploads and changes what is different. So that means just any project files that I've edited or worked on will get changed. Any footage, new footage that I've added to the system will get uploaded. Um, and so it ends up not being such an intensive process as it goes and keeps itself up to date. Um, and, uh, and then since it's cloud-based storage, you have the option to go in there and if there's something wrong with one of your files or you want to get one back, you can go in and you can select you know, which files you want to zip and you can download them. Although this is not like, like a Google Drive or Dropbox where you just go in and get what you want and pull it down. Um, you know, they really don't want you to do that and you do have to go in and select things and get it zipped and it's not as simple as like a Dropbox or a Google Drive. Um, it really is just a backup solution, not necessarily just a storage solution. Sorry about the sun, guys. That thing is coming straight through. We had a nice sunny day today and it's just creeping through the blinds and hitting me in the face. Um, but what we've got going here is, uh, sorry, another thing with Backblaze that's awesome is if everything in here gets destroyed, gets stolen, um, burns to the ground, heaven forbid, um, what I can do is Backblaze will take all of my data that they have in the cloud, load it onto physical hard drives, and ship it to me. And then I can use those to rebuild my entire archive, my entire system when I get replacement equipment. Um, and so that's just another level of security for my footage. So I have it in three separate locations here physically in my office. Um, and I have it all saved and stored up in the cloud. So my data is as safe as I think it can possibly get. Um, but do let me know guys if you have any other cloud uh, services or online backup services that you like um, that I may not know about. Um, so as of yet, I haven't seen anything come in on the chat. That's okay, guys. I don't take any offense. But if you are here live and you do want to chat and say hello, uh, please feel free and I'll pop it up on the screen because um, I've got just a little bit more to talk to you guys about. Um, and that's sort of how I go about backing up things that aren't my Drobos, um, backing up my main system. Um, and, uh, and copying drives quickly with some software. So I know this isn't the most interesting of topics, but guess what? It is essential. Um, so we're going to get into this here. 
so what I want to do real quick is I want to go back to um, my B cam here and I want to take a look at that uh, that storage shelf that I was showing you guys and talk to you about some of the other drives that I have on there and what I do with those. So we'll get back down here. Ooh, we lost some light, didn't we? Oh, my little light died. Sorry, I was just going to open up the uh, exposure a little bit here. It had a little LED light, but I guess his battery has run out. A little Aperture M9. But anyway, so we already went over the Drobos here. But as you can see, there's a bunch of other drives that I have right here. Um, and of course, I am OCD as crazy, so everything has a nice little label on it. Um, so as you can see, I have Time Machine. And what this is, if any of you are uh, Mac users, you're familiar with this, is there is a Mac program uh, called Time Machine built in that will daily back up your system and it does the same sort of similar thing where it finds the things that have changed or that are different and will write those to it. So I have a drive here um, that is a time machine backup of my entire computer, um, just the main um, computer hard drive. So I think this is only like a terabyte drive because I only have a terabyte in my system. But that backs up to that on a daily basis. So if my computer ever dies and I need to buy a new one, I can connect this drive to it, restore from Time Machine, and it'll be just like my computer never died. It'll just like reinstall like my computer's brain into that new computer, basically. Um, then, of course, I am a big media consumer, not only just media creator. So I have a huge iTunes library. Um, I think this is a four terabyte drive in here. So I do have my iTunes library here. Um, I have a photography drive here. I don't do as much photography as I used to. So this really doesn't get utilized, but it is here. Um, but this is what I want to talk about a little bit here is this iTunes backup. So this drive is a perfect copy of my iTunes library. And there is a reason for this. And yes, there is another story associated with it. So let's come on back up here. So when I was a, uh, when I was uh, in college, I had this gigantic library of movies and TV shows and music and all sorts of stuff on my iTunes drive. I kept it on a portable hard drive and all that. And, uh, Oh, we got a comment in here. Let's see. Let me bring it up here. Trevor, hey, good to see you, man. Yes, I am still here talking about right now a, uh, a horror story of, of losing a drive full of media. Um, so I had this iTunes drive that I had cultivated this huge collection um, of videos and movies and TV shows and all that sort of stuff. Um, well, guess what? Like hard drives do, it died. Um, and sadly, I still have that drive. It is sitting in a drawer over here. I went and got an estimate to get it repaired and they wanted $1,400 and couldn't guarantee that they could get the data off of it. Um, and so to this day, it has sat. Um, so I have slowly over the years rebuilt my iTunes library, um, still missing a lot of the items that are on that drive. But that is the reason why I have a redundant why I have this redundant iTunes backup drive down here, which is an exact copy, a clone, if you will, and I'll get into that, of this iTunes library drive right here. Um, and let me show you guys exactly how I go about doing that. There is an easy way and a fantastic software for doing that. And it is this guy right here. It is called Carbon Copy Cloner. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, but this software is so simple and absolutely extremely powerful and just great. Um, and it does basically exactly what it sounds like. You can set it in a number of ways or number of ways, but basically it will make a carbon copy clone of your drive to another drive. And there's lots of different ways you can do it. You can get it to erase fully each day 
Um, you can get it to only change what is different, you know, and, and make sure that they're the same. You can schedule different times for it and all sorts of stuff. Um, so let me show you, I've got my carbon copy clone, or man, I am stumbling over words today. Carbon copy cloner. So let's go ahead and let this guy get opened up. Oh, look, a new version is available. Remind me later, please. Let's get that out of the way. So here you go. So this is your basic, uh, let me pull that down. This is your basic interface uh, for Carbon Copy Cloner. You know, it might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but it works. And what it is, is you can assign all these different tasks um, for what you want it to do. So here you go, here's my iTunes backup task. So I tell it, take my iTunes library, and I want you to copy all the files, and I want you to copy them over to iTunes backup and I want you to do it every day at 7 a.m. Run daily at 7 a.m. It has this safety net thing. Um, you can look into that a little bit more. I'm not gonna go into super detail on this software, but basically I can set up all these things. So here's a client drive that's copying to my, my Drobo each day to make sure that they're in perfect sync if I work on it. Um, I have a work projects group where I can add new tasks if I'm working on stuff for work and I want them to auto copy at like a certain time of day. Uh, this is a photo drive backup since I have a photography field drive. If I go out and shoot any photos, um, I make sure everything is in sync. Um, and so it's absolutely fantastic. So Carbon Copy Cloner, I think is totally worth it. It's a fantastic program. It allows me to set up all those tasks so that my drives will back themselves up to a spare drive each day. Um, and it's just, it's absolutely awesome. And with all of this redundancy and all this uh, seeming insanity, I can sleep at night. Um, so uh, I know that not only is my, my video uh, footage safe, you know, the stuff that I, you know, make a living off of, but I also know that my entertainment is safe. I know that my iTunes stuff is safe. I know that my personal stuff, uh, you know, on the computer system here, you know, all the stuff that I have installed and customized and set up is Time Machine backed up and all that. And everything is backed up in the cloud with Backblaze. Um, so I know that's a lot of information there, guys. And I appreciate any of you who stuck with me through the whole thing. Um, but if you do have any questions after the fact, um, please feel free to pop them in the comments down below. Um, and I'll try and answer them um, as best I can and clarify if anything was confusing. And if you guys have any other solutions, things I don't know about or use any other different software um, or backup uh, systems, uh, cloud-based systems or hardware, RAIDs that you like, uh, please leave those down in the comments too, not just for me, but for everyone else who may be interested in trying to find safe ways to back up their footage um, and all of that. Um, so Trevor, it looks like you were our only live chat participant today. So I really appreciate you stopping by and, uh, and, and chiming in there. Even if you just asked if I was still going, that's awesome. Thanks for popping by. Um, but yeah, guys, so... I'm going to bring this one to a close here uh, in just a sec, um, but I do want to let you know what's coming up. Um, so next week I have decided that we're not going to have a live show. Um, as many of you know, it will be December 23rd. Um, and I have a feeling that most people on Saturday, December 23rd in the afternoon are probably going to be busy doing some last minute shopping. Um, so my guess is that uh, my my guess is that that people are going to be out there, are going to be busy, and won't have time for a live show. And who knows? I'm probably going to have that last minute person pop up in my mind that I need to go and shop for, and just be like, "Oh crap! I forgot my mother." So don't worry, guys. I didn't forget my mother. She's taken care of. I got her gift. Um, but yeah, so I'm not going to have a live show next week. I'm going to let everybody uh, do their craziness and then hopefully enjoy their holiday uh, for those of us who celebrate Christmas. Um, so I hope everybody has a good one. Um, but we will be back after um, that the following week on December 30th to, believe it or not, close out 2017. So 
we are going to be doing a 2018 New Year's resolution for filmmakers. So I have a list of New Year's resolutions uh, that I'm going to try to do. Um, and uh, we can chat and see if you guys have any that you would like to do. Um, you know, things for the new year to keep you sharp. And I'm not talking about stuff like uh, go to the gym and stuff like that. I'm talking about filmmaker resolutions. So stuff uh, that applies specifically to filmmaking um, and what you want to do to sort of maybe make yourself a better filmmaker or maybe you have some goals of stuff you want to achieve, maybe even uh, some equipment that you want to be able to save up to purchase you know, all these kinds of things. So I'll talk about that. Um, and so right here at the end here, I do see we have uh, a few chat things coming in. So we'll hang out and chat for a second. I do appreciate it, guys. So Trevor, again, um, you just use uh, normal, normal hard drives hanging off the computer in pairs. Okay, so yeah, um, I was, as mentioning earlier, I do the same thing for a portion of my workflow. As you can uh, probably see over here, I do have uh, a bunch of drives here, and two of these actually are a perfect identical pair, my field drive A and field drive B, and I do use carbon copy cloner while they're here to make sure that they're synced up together. So if I go out with field drive A and pick up more footage, bring it back, um, I know that they're synced up. And then I was also saying I also keep a single individual drive for each project. This actually is what inevitably gets sent to my client when I'm done with it and has everything. Um, so I have these in addition to the stuff that I have on my Drobo. So I'm paranoid as crazy. But yes, um, you can just go with a bunch of hard drives plugged in um, like this, the portable ones. The, the real key is just to make sure that you have more than one copy. Um, you know, ideally three and ideally one in a different location, you know, one of those three in a different location. Um, but, you know, if you can't pull that off, just at bare minimum, two copies um, of everything. It's just the way to go. Um, but let's see here. Uh, yeah, Carbon Copy Cloner clones them once a night. I do the same thing. Being able to schedule Carbon Copy Cloner and being able to schedule it to do it, you know, in the middle of the night while I'm asleep and my system's not in use. Um, same with Backblaze, being able to schedule that. I schedule Backblaze at I think like 1 a.m. or something like that. Um, and it starts going. And that's good too because with uh, Backblaze, if I see that Backblaze is starting to back up, that usually means it's time for me to call it quits and go to bed. I've been working too long. <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, the ability to schedule Carbon Copy Cloner, I mean, it's just an awesome software. I really, really like it. Uh, let's see here. Graphic Mill, you just arrived. So sorry, man. One o'clock every Saturday. One o'clock Eastern time is when I will be here, uh, with the exception of next week, of course. Uh, but hopefully I'll see you at one o'clock on the 30th. And do feel free to go back and, uh, and re-watch this show um, after it's uh, processed by YouTube. It'll be available for all of eternity uh, for, for playback. Uh, so there you go. Uh, let's see here. Graphic Mill, you're saying... Chronosync and a shelf of drives. Like about 24 four terabyte drives. It's crazy but necessary. So I've heard of uh, I've heard of Chronosync. Um, somebody was mentioning to that uh, that to me the other day. So that's another software that I might check out and look into. Um, that's uh, pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, just basically what it comes down to is lots and lots of drives, whether they be in a RAID. Now RAIDs are preferable for me because it sort of keeps the drives organized and bunched together as opposed to just shelves full of like this um, but you know you got to do what you got to do um, and let's see here uh, oh you're so you're talking about using uh, Trevor's asking if you're using uh, JBOD so JBOD means for anybody out there just a bunch of discs uh, so yeah these naming schemes are very interesting um, and let's see here, Graphic Mill says, I have drives for my main clients and they're backed up in pairs. So there you go. It's easier to find their content. Yeah, so that's similar to what I'm employing with uh, each, of, each of my client drives. Each of my clients has a dedicated drive. When I shoot with them, I basically come back with three copies of their drive. It whittles down to one copy here on my desk and two copies in my Drobos. Um, so that's how I handle that and have my multiple copies. 
Um, Graphic Mill says he was out there shoveling snow. So our snow has melted here. As you can see, the sun is coming through and making it look like I'm in some sort of futuristic laser prison or something like that. Um, but, you know, what am I going to do about it? But anyway, guys, uh, one more time, just to remind you, I will not be having a show next week uh, just to let everybody enjoy the holiday and make it through their holiday shopping next Saturday. Um, and so we are going to be going live again on the 30th at 1 p.m. Eastern time to close out 2017 and welcome in 2018 with our New Year's resolutions for filmmakers. Um, so guys, I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Hope you enjoyed this show. Hope you got some information out of it. Um, if there is any additional information that you'd like, uh, just pop it down in the comments below after this video is posted and, uh, I'll be happy to answer it and discuss it with you guys. But other than that, guys, I look forward to, uh, to seeing you on the 30th and, uh, let's say goodbye to... 2017 for better or for worse whatever your opinion on it is <laughs> all right guys take care of yourselves and i'll see you at the end of the year